manifestors. We are a small group, second rarest at only 9% of the world's population is a manifestor. Yeah. Uh, and the strategy is to initiate and inform. So the initiating is like starting stuff, but we also have a made up strategy, which is the informing part, which we will get into in a bit as to why it's made up, which is fascinating. I only found out about that recently. And the themes are peace when you're in alignment and anger when you are not quite living let's remind everybody to. what this strategy is for the human design system is not a mm -hmm. belief system it's a science you mm -hmm. empirically witness it and watch it repeat like every good science should repeat itself in person after person and it does and this strategy is a way to get you um to initiate you lol into into witnessing that you can interface with the genetic workings of your own body as it relates to your design, you could get to interface with exactly what's happening very much through the strategy and the themes. The themes and the strategy give us all the roadmap and the road signs and the markers along the way. It gives us our mile markers. It gives us everything to see that, oh my God, this is a thing. And if I use my strategy and my authority and I understand these themes, I can see it. I can, I can see it. I can work with it. I can understand it. I can interface with it. I can change it. Yes. One of the things you mentioned last week, which I thought was like, ha, ah, is looking at your themes as a chemical response that's going on in your body. And that is what's bringing up that sensation, that emotion. It's and don't even look at it that way. Understand it specifically as a chemistry inside your body. No different than ladies have a monthly cycle or boys go through a growth spurt where their voice changes these are all chemistries mm -hmm. um those are more profound easy to see these mm -hmm. are easy to see when you look yeah yep. okay so we got our intro Boop. okay so more on our lovely manifestor so this is very cool so they get their name from the ability to just manifest without reference to anyone else so what that means is so last week we talked about generators they kind of need something to respond to manifestors don't have a reference point necessarily they can just get up and do whatever and without do. needing that yes without right. needing that and the other thing about the manifestor just to keep in mind is we're all here reacting to life so no one gets out of the reaction game <laughs> we all react to it you know <laughs> You know you don't get to leave that behind and the generator specifically is they are oriented as a responder and that's where their truth comes out this is about getting at your truth because the truth then guides your decisions and your decisions lead you to the peace and the satisfaction and the victory and the surprise and all of that so just to keep in mind this initiating this whole that they get up and do the manifester is out front they do everyone else is some form of waiting to be invited waiting to respond waiting out the lunar cycle if you're a, a if you're a reflector and or waiting to see where you know you waited to see that that you're not disappointed basically um so that i just wanted to point that out they they specifically just sort of do and it can be a lonely place because they are not happy if they're not doing is the thing so it's not because the generator can do all day long the projector can do all day long the projector recognizes something great suddenly they're doing mm -hmm. but it's in reference to what they've recognized uh the generator is in a responsive mode they're oriented in response they can respond and suddenly they're just like a manifester they're out doing in, in a sense but they're not a manifester at all they will run out of that just do until they are responding again it'll sort of wear down the manifester never wears that down they're always stuck stuck out front doing and they'll get restless and they'll fall out of their signature of being at peace with themselves if they're not doing you take a manifester and plop them on a couch and tell them to sit there they won't be happy very quickly you know very uh, quickly. Yeah, I mean, I it'll be bad for anyone but it'll be bad for them and and because they have to do uh do, don't even get me started with uh getting ahead of myself because i'm like oh that that's uh you know looking at the creative urge and rest cycles so i don't want to get mm -hmm. into that quite yet but 
you did touch on the anger bit, right? So the not self, like we went over, is anger. So anger pops up in you know a few ways. One of the ways is when there's resistance from the outside. Let's say you want to do something and there's things and people getting in the way. It's like, I want to do this thing and you're like in my way and immediate anger flare up. Yeah. That's very, very much my experience. Yeah. <laughs> the manifestor. Well, that's, that's the manifestor experience, <laughs> emotional or not. That's the experience. Yeah. And um, another is also trusting like because it's very easy to doubt yourself when you're a manifester because of this is what I was going to talk about your creative urges. So manifestors work in cycles. So you have. I like to think of it like a bear. So if you had to think of a, a manifestor as an animal, it's a giant bear. The bear is either hibernating or it's like mowing down all the things but usually mostly hibernating <laughs> until it's ready to come out and do the things so when a manifester is in their rest cycle it can feel very very um like disorienting because it's like i want to do stuff but i literally do not have the energy to do it I don't or have not to do it well, not to do it well. Or do it well, or the inspiration to do it. Like, yes, you can schlog yourself through a rest cycle. Yep. But your body and suffer and, suffer, and, suffer. and your body hates it. It's like, yep. I don't like this. So whatever you're outputting at that point is like nowhere near as potent, I would say, as right. if you were in your creative urge. Right. But that's where the I guess the distrust comes because that way of operating is no, new. It, it's not just new. It's the fact that if you compare the rest of the types, they don't really operate in that manner. So everyone around you has demonstrated more consistency because we do live in a generator no, world. Hold on. Let's correct yes. that. All the, non correct all the non sacral types have that exact same thing. It's mm -hmm. the it's the not self themes that will show up quite differently. Yeah. Uh, and, and it will move them differently. That's mm -hmm. all true. But mm -hmm. each and every non sacral it's only the sacral that is designed to buzz through with its energy until it physically falls asleep because it's burnt out that energy and degenerates mm -hmm. into sleep. We do mm -hmm. generate. We generate ourselves awake, and we generate, mm -hmm. and then put the manifestor, the projector, the reflector. No sacral rest cycles become wicked important to all y'all in your own particular way. Right. The manifestor it's just I will say different. does sprint mm -hmm. more. That you guys sprint more. Yeah. You tend to sprint more. It's like a like, mad dash. Like yeah. for example, what again from my understanding, the reflector, their cycle is very much connected with the moon. So their energy is going to go up and down and, you know, wax and wane according to whatever's happening, not only with the lunar cycle, but also planetary transits. Because even the smallest transit affects their gates and their channels. Affects them, yeah, and makes them a being. A, a, right. A, 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 one of the other three types, absolutely. Which we don't want to get into too deeply because we have a whole episode on reflectors. However, projectors, again, from my understanding, they are moving at a slower pace but they are able to nap and then get back into a thing and then nap and get back into a thing but when a manifester is in their rest cycle they are deeply deeply exhausted they are tapped out like their body does just not have the energy unless they're borrowing from sacral but then they have a hangover Right, Which then they have they, they have an issue with it. Well, of all the types, the one that wants to go the fastest, um, that goes is the manifester. They just want to go fast, and I don't mean reckless. They just want to move, move. Let's move it along. As soon as they see there's the next step they can take, move this along. All the other types may wait, may hesitate, may do this. May, the manifester would like to move to the next thing, and because they can initiate without waiting for a response, that's why mm -hmm. their strategy is to inform the other because mm -hmm. they're so far ahead. And a different animal, another animal to add to that, I get that, you know what, that, that hibernation cycle is a great analogy, but let's not forget the stallion, the wild stallion. The generators are like the workhorses that are more herd together and they're, as long as they're happy, they're working. Um, and, and the manifestors are much more like 
the stallions out in the field try and bridle one you know what i mean try and get a, a thing on. you have to break them in order to get a saddle on them you have to chase them down to get a saddle on them and and they don't want to be broken you know say like, no so, don't tell me what to do absolutely right. not but as as a manifester myself i had i'm still working through trusting that cycle because yeah. you start to feel crazy it's like how do i even know that this is correct i i just want to rest but everyone else is doing it but i want to do that's it, but my body experiment. doesn't want to that's and, the, yeah that's the trust in the experiment one moana mm -hmm. absolutely because all you have to do is watch it play out for a week or so as soon as you surrender enough to allow that work rest cycle to just cycle back and forth look at it like the cycling of anything that cycles quickly mm -hmm. um and, and and follow it the second you're even a little drowsy like a little tired go to sleep right where you are if it's in your chair or something lay your head down you'll only be there for 10 or 15 minutes um just totally turn off for a little bit because when you come back you'll be able to go right back at it and you'll find did you need a half hour did you need 15 minutes you need an hour and a half for lunch every day and then another time somewhere along the way what are you finding without i'm that? going to have to disagree with that okay. <laughs> so what happens usually for manifestors uh myself included being around other manifestors is we have ignored this cycle for so long what happened so i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you guys a story i swear this story has uh it's not a complete tangent and it is completely related to what we're talking about i tend to make analogies uh, with stories but here's yep. what happened i was on a boat uh a research ve vessel 134 feet sailboat and i had never steered a boat or a ship this size before and the first time i was in at the helm they're like okay these are your coordinates keep at this coordinate and i'm like okay i can do that and i'm like oh the boat's moving a little i think i need to turn and i turned it a bit and when i turned it a bit i noticed the boat didn't move now let me turn some more and it didn't move and i turned it some more and i turned it some more and i kept doing it until my watch officer rolled by and he almost had a heart attack going oh my god we are going to jive which the is the boat basically doing a complete 180 because what happened is all those turns caught up to each other right and now it's going to go complete 180 and it was going to be a disaster so it's the same with manifestors and their rest cycle because we ignore it for so long ignore it ignore it ignore it when we give ourselves permission to rest i know manifestors that are stuck in like a two-year rest cycle there it's just all of those ignored rest cycles caught up and your body's like finally right you are right. listening and we are not gonna move we're not for gonna do a, it <laughs> for quite a while well we just well then it wasn't so much that you disagree you just put a finesse on what happens to the mm -hmm. people when we've lived that long because what i'm saying is still true and mm -hmm. you start to get into your experiment you'll see that as soon if you're caught up enough on your rest and really mm -hmm. and truly i mean that's you're resting the psyche at that point the body only needs a couple days um mm -hmm. of physical rest but or a week or whatever but all i'm getting at is once you start to get into a rhythm of allowing yourself to mm -hmm. when you feel low fall off fall off yeah if you're in the middle of a work day watch your car and recline that chair and just see if you fall asleep for 10 or 15 minutes literally or not off <laughs> it's true mm -hmm. it's true if you're at home getting your recliner whatever if you're if you can get straight into your bed and then get up when you when it's done because your clock will wake you up if you're a mm -hmm. manifester your body still wants to do even when you're sleeping i mean mm -hmm it's not gonna do obviously but i'm just saying it's waiting to wake up as you start to come through those stages waking up it's mm -hmm. it wants to do you want of to course do. so absolutely don't think you're gonna just fall down and stay asleep the whole time and if no, you do allow course. it if you do allow it just allow yourself instead of the doing focus on the not doing and the actual sleeping and resting for the yeah. for the first month and find out where you need that so that you can fit the doing in around it and you'll see oh my god i get so much done 
That's yeah. so hard as a manifestor. You have no idea. So the first time I allowed myself to rest, I was going crazy. <laughs> I was losing it. Uh, it was not fun. But anyhow, let's move it's on true. to our Is aura. it not true? But you yeah, found it's out the truth. True. I did. I'm like, because it, it feels like that rest is going to last forever. It's it's like, this is never going to end. And then, so mm -hmm. there's that aspect of the trust. Sorry, I'm like back backpedaling a bit. But then there's also the other aspect of the trust of, is the creative urges can be completely random. And there's a trust of like, I don't, this is a crazy idea. And I have no idea if it's going to work or anyone's going to buy it. Or if anyone is going to think this is important. So or if it's something I really even want to do. No, there's the want to do thing if it's a true creative urge. Right. If right. it's a true creative urge, mm -hmm. the want is there, but the right. self trust is like, it's like a, ba it's what is it called? It's like a battle in between. Conflict. They're in yeah. conflict with each other. Yeah. Exactly. The, the desire to want to do it. And then the, is it you know this this makes no sense like why do i want to do this like everyone else is going to be like what are you doing but my my inner whatever what would what i say my inner voice is saying i should do this so actually this is something that i heard a, a while ago that the manifester creative urges like manifestors have a direct line to the cosmos the universe whatever so these urges are coming from somewhere it it's not necessarily like an outside response thing it's an inner response thing which is a great segue into our aura and why we are, yeah. we are closed so we're closed so we can birth these things that are coming from deep within us without outside influence i like to explain to the manifester that closed mm -hmm. and repelling sounds bad you know when yeah. they first hear it it sounds like eh, i don't like it i get that I get that because it sounds good. I trust me. I didn't like that. I have to wait to respond. I thought that means I'm not a doer. And, and then I found out, oh, I'm not. I'm a generator. Um, closed means <clears throat> you're closed off to the uh, influence of the other when you're creating. Yeah. yeah. Trust me. You'll well, be actually, open not even the... when you're creating. Even when you're in a rest cycle, you can just rub yeah, people the wrong closed. way. Absolutely. <laughs> you're, you're closed. You can close yourself off easily. It doesn't mean you're a closed off person. You will open up every time you're in the mood. You feel like it. It's right for you. There's still a world you live in with people. It doesn't make you the fool on the hill or the wretched guy who's always like Ebenezer Scrooge closed. The repelling, <laughs> same thing. Look at repelling like what you do to stop mosquitoes from biting you. You put the thing on and it repels them. The, if the skeet or whatever you use or let's say whatever, you, you make a smoky fire and it repels the mosquitoes. You, and mosquitoes is good because everyone else is like a gnat and a mosquito to you. They're buzzing around trying to get your attention and influence you. And you're closed in repelling aura is there to sweep that resistance away. Every manifester knows this feeling that, that I'm aware of. Everyone has known this feeling. You're able to move through people. Yes. I'm moving through. I'm moving through. And whether that's literally like in a crowd or yeah, in a crowd. Not, or, or even literally like at work, at this, at that, when the manifestors on the move, other people tend to get out of the way. If they don't, they're actually there to resist that manifestor because that manifestor didn't inform them. The informing is to drop the resistance so they don't have to repel so hard. But that closed and repelling puts a shell around them. Even when a, even when a generator aura comes and envelops the manifestor, the manifestor is still intact isolated from that aura even though they're within the aura mm -hmm. even though the, so, the other types intermix with that aura but the manifestor acts like a little bubble inside that aura that's still got its little shell around it so i don't know if it was you danny or somewhere else i thought the the, the best um analogy i thought about the aura is it's like a force field a it's, force field. it's just a force field that's like with you no matter where you go and yeah, absolutely and so in my experience, and this happens on a daily, like I will be Feels in up. a room full of people and no one will interact with me. Everyone will interact amongst themselves and I'm just in the corner always, unless I open my mouth and say and something and You're then initiated. someone, and this is what you said, when you inform, which is beautiful, we're just segueing into our strategy, mm -hmm. that force field comes down a little and they can peek through the force field 
and they're less alarmed by the dangerous manifester that does not need to wait like they do. They're the dangerous, bad or hard manifester that might get angry. The man, so none of these are words people say. They're senses that they get. The manifester that just is going to go do the thing that you know that's a little scary. I, I don't even know what they're doing. What you know? What if? What if? What if? And they mm-hmm. just don't know. And so. So the people closest to you as a manifester very often will be the ones that give you the most resistance until you start informing them. Well, no, I'm, I'm still doing this. You know, don't don't stop me. I'm, I'm about to go do this. And then mm-hmm. suddenly they're like, oh, I know. I don't like it, but I know what they're doing. And, um, you know, OK. And suddenly the resistance goes down. The acceptance goes up and the manifester does not have to be so isolated because they can be mm-hmm. lonely creatures. They can be lonely creatures because oh, they, they, believe me, I know. <laughs> they just can't tell, and they feel alien to the other types. Mm-hmm. They just feel alien. What would a wild stallion feel like plopped in the middle of a workhorse was heard? It's like, That's what the hell insane. am I doing here? What am I doing here? What the hell? Yeah. You know? So it all, it, it can yeah. it can like you said it can be super. So it's the close and then yeah, repelling. Like it's it's like the magnet that's doing the opposite thing. It's keeping. Yeah people away and sometimes the magnet works the other way where you're bringing people in but in my experience again it's my circuitry maybe other manifestors have a different experience nine times out of ten it's repelling maybe mm-hmm. one out of ten times it's bringing someone in <laughs> well, that bringing in, just, don't forget our aura goes into the other manifestor or not mm-hmm. as soon as we humans are in auric contact with the other my aura exchanges with you like wi-fi yours with me like Mm -hmm. wi-fi we don't have words for it here on the surface where we think we're living but it's there Mm -hmm. and it goes in like an incredibly sophisticated wi-fi in a way because it's it's every piece of my definition goes into you and you backwards into me Mm -hmm. you know we're now we're now in partnership with each other so ultimately that that aura stands there as a way for that manifester to basically open up and plenty of people it will be right for plenty of people be right for because don't forget they just put that in you hey that person just filled in my g center i don't care yeah it's a little weird no one seems to talk to them but i'm talking to them Mm -hmm. there's a person naturally recognizing that this feels good this person feels good Mm. you know although they're still a little bit of a strange foreign entity because if they were a generator the generator would understand the other generators quicker better faster in a way Mm. It doesn't mean they don't understand the manifestor quickly. And not to mention when they open their mouth, they will inform us. Exactly. As soon as that happens. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. when I start saying stuff, then they're like, oh, you're like so friendly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. I just, if I don't say anything, people just stay away from me. I don't have to say, I don't have to do anything. I'm just there. Yeah. And, people and if just a generator stay doesn't say anything, is sitting in a crowd or even a projector, somebody's going to cover off the other three types. Someone's going to come up to them ultimately and say something. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't mean that doesn't happen with a manifestor. It's just if you do a social experiment, uh, you will see a vast difference in the amount and yeah. the intensity in which it happens. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we were talking about the informing piece. So this is yep. interesting. So the informing thing only happens when you use your actual voice, like saying it out loud, because manifestors have a motorized throat. Yeah. So it's only when you say it out loud, that force field comes down. And then, like you said, the resistance melts away or parts away so that's one part and then the other part is to start developing a trust with those internal urges and even it might feel like okay no one else operates like this those urges are coming with their direct line with the universe the cosmos whatever and they're they're coming through because you are the only manifester that is getting that urge. So this is another very interesting thing. No manifester is alike. So whatever urge I'm having, another manifester doesn't have that same urge. So right. all of us are here to bring forth a very bespoke creation from our creative urges. So if me as a manifester just lets that urge die and I never act on it, n- there's not going to be another manifester to pick up that slack. It's just generally. Nice. Unless they're working in some kind of partnership with each other. But exactly. Absolutely. So no, that I found, right. mm-hmm. so, found found that very fascinating. But yes, sorry, Danny. Well, well, what else about this informing? This informing, obviously, you say it out loud to the other. But what you're doing is you're informing with all the things. 
And the things that you're least comfortable with informing are the things that you need to practice your strategy of informing the other so that they know <clears throat> what's the scoop and so that you do the hard thing. Hard things make life easy. You got to understand that hard hmm. things make life easy. It's hard to go to college, but if it's a good college and you got something out of it and life got easier, it's hard to have kids, but imagine your life without them after you have them. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. It's hard to stay <laughs> married, but but whatever, it suddenly it's not. It's hard to build a home, but now you got a place to live, right? Hard, hard, hard. It's hard. I play the piano. It took forever, and now I'm so happy. Hard things made my life so much better. This informing will be hard. You will come into stunning moments where you don't want to say anything because the manifester, there's one thing that they can know is that they know that people try to stop them and or get in their way, and they just don't want to say anything because they don't want anyone to say no. That informing is not there to get permission. It's there to inform them. Yes. So it's you're literally not, just like a, I'm doing this, just letting you know. So what? The, so there's two <laughs> types of informing. There's just the informing, hey, I'm doing this. There's several types. There's the informing that can be very stern. Uh, you know, this is what's going to happen. You know, that's that's OK. The warning that's, informing. It's a warning <laughs> informing. There's the polite, ran, regular informing. And then there is absolutely asking for permission. There is because you, you can't inform me you're going to take my car. It's my car. It's not yours. You have to ask my permission um, and other things. So they'll find a blend because sometimes it's really polite to ask permission, even though you don't need to. And that way you start mm. to find out because this other being try to stop me because you're again, all of our other strategies are innate. Your guys' strategy has been has been has been cast upon you as a way to interface with your own mechanics. See, you just took the the words right out of my mouth. I was going to get into why informing is a made up strategy for manifestors. It's made up, it's made up for the it's manifestors. It's so we get along with it's other so people. Along. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd be dictators. I mean, yeah, we you were. don't really even need a strategy, so to speak. If it was just you guys, you would already just do your thing all the time. Um, but you need us. We need you. We're humans. We're here to commune. That's the nine centered way. We're here to get along, to mm -hmm. be with, to be communal, not communist, but communal, you know, right. um, and, and, and go out and strike out and do our own things. Um, so informing is, in, you know, strongly informing and politely informing, asking permission and a blend therein, because every manifesto child has to be strongly informed and taught to ask permission and be courteous with its manners yes mm -hmm. ma'am no ma'am thank you please all the stuff that you would do they need to be taught those manners so that they can be a competent manifester in the world as soon as they take it because they don't it's not 18 when they take it although sometimes it is but mostly it's not mostly it's they take it as soon as they're old enough and strong enough to motorize themselves out the door <laughs> that's their way and you've got to make a wide berth so that they can do that. So, mm -hmm. um, but you got to teach them those manners so that it's ingrained in them. So they know mm -hmm. when to ask him permission because every manifester is part of their strategy and forming. As soon as you're about to inform someone, I'm about to quit my job. Yeah, you're going to quit your job. But before you do that fully, you've got to actually make yourself an impact list to inform your own self. What is my impact on the world if I quit this job, if I make this move, if I do this thing? You don't need to make an impact list over silly stuff like what brand of toothpaste am I going to buy? It? But, <laughs> but maybe you need to inform or ask Mrs. Do you mind if I buy this brand of toothpaste? I want to try it because maybe they don't like it, you know, and then if they don't like it, you buy it anyways and get them their toothpaste. All I'm getting at is it's a it's a mixture and they have to find a blend because it'll be different for each person. And part of that blend becomes making an impact list who I'm about to quit my job. I need to write down everyone I will impact. I'm going to impact my boss. There's two people here I care about. The uh, production team's going to be impacted. The guy I get my coffee from every morning at Starbucks will be impacted. There's three of them there. I know them all by name. The lady at the bank, if I move, I won't see them anymore. I'm going to impact my parents because I'll move farther away. I'll move closer. Make the full and leave no one out. Hmm, not because they're so important genius. to your life. Not, not because they're so important to your life per se. The guy that makes the coffee, you'll, you know, that. but you're impacting them. They're another human that you're in communion with. And you just write them down because what it does is it makes a broad, creative tapestry of what is your impact in this moment. That guy that makes your coffee might be the straw that breaks the camel's back to say, you know what, I'm going to hang on. I'm going to I'm going to re up for another year and do this thing because actually I want the money. I, I, I'm good enough. But I am heading out. I know I'm heading out. And if you piss me off, I will head out sooner. You know, you can inform them of that. But it might have been the 
the ladies at the bank and the guy that makes your coffee, that just was that last little thing that said, I'm going to stick around the rest of the time. Not the big part of it, but I'm just saying, you just don't know. You just don't know. So you have to make, so look at all this tapestry. You guys got all this complication to your, to your actual strategy and authority, to your strategy. You're informing, you're asking permission. You're strongly informing. I, I forgot the way you put it. I liked it. You're, it's, What's the way you said it? Strong informing. It's the you oh, use the I, I, oh, uh, that was the warning. Warning, <laughs> warning informing. Oh, rhymes. There's warning informing. There's regular informing. <laughs> there's asking permission. There's making your impact list. And and a good manifester once they make that impact list, they'll see. Oh, I can do that in my head most of the time. You know what I mean? So it just happens automatically. And so you do all of this stuff as it relates to one by one. You see where do you have to do the stuff until you become really good at it. And that's part of the entering the experiment. Witness where that blend is for each person, each situation along the way, and suddenly get really good at it. You might mm. say, you might say, I like warning and forming. I'm going to just do that more often. Don't do this because I'll do that. Listen, I'm doing this. And so that might really fit one manifester where that's more what they do. But then they'll find that they turn a lot of people off at times and they'll suddenly tone that back and get more regular informing, not warning and forming. And they'll make a blend. You'll make a blend. And you're looking to be at peace. Yes. Peace gives you the things. Are we there yet at peace where we talk about that? No, we're definitely, you're, you're getting ahead of yourself. But I will quickly wrap up the unnatural feeling of the informing. Because yeah. it's a made-up strategy, it doesn't feel good for a manifester to inform it feels awkward it feels clonky eventually mm -hmm. it it becomes part of your just natural way of being but that only happens because of almost like muscle memory it's yep. because you're doing it so often you just like by habit now do it but when you first do it 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 feels very very weird which it's is why it true. helps when you were raised to you know, ask permission, which then turns into just plain old informing. But we kind of went over some of the obstacles of being a manifester. But one of them is when you are in what your creative flow state, one of the most annoying things that can happen is someone comes and interrupts it. <laughs> so you're like in your groove and someone knocks on the door. Immediate reaction is usually anger. And then it's very hard to get back into that flow that you were originally doing. It's true. And yeah, it it's it's a thing. It's just, I mean, unless you're a recluse that lives in the middle of the woods, you're probably going to have this happen to you. And it's just something to be aware of. Other, like we mentioned before, manifestors are inconsistent with their energy. And they get judged by non-manifestors. They get judged by themselves they're like i should be this way i'm not this way what's wrong with me you need help but manifestors resist the help they're like no no no. i'm i want to do it alone but manifestors are here to do things in communion with others and Period. To... if you don't you'll you'll end up falling apart because you exactly. need the, you need your generators the generators are the workers you know not the slaves, the workers. They have to find their own creative way because we're just, if you put us to work, suddenly we're, we're buzzing with energy all the time, you know, at the thing. If we're empowered, then that that's that's for us. So mm -hmm. they need it. Yeah, I agree exactly. with you. Yeah. And the last is distrusting themselves, right? It just, it, it takes a lot of <laughs> experimenting and going through various cycles of rest and creative urge for you to finally realize that you know what your design is exactly the way it's meant to be and everything happening inside of you and externally is all working to your benefit so that's something to consider is there anything you'd like to add danny before i go on to the next slide no move on to the next one this is this is moving along nicely i'm pulling Beautiful. up a separate chart for for um Oh, I have it on. Don't worry about it. I, I'll, I'll pull it up when it's time. So no, I'm, pulling, I'm pulling up an advanced chart. Oh, That's beautiful. So yep. manifestors in alignment. So when they, you know, when they're trying to manifest, bleh, can't speak, <laughs> when they're trying to master is to be inspired. 
right? So when they have their creative urges, they're inspired. They're like, oh, I'm inspired to like go do a thing. And when they are in that feeling of trust and making stuff, everyone around them starts feeling inspired. And you start taking action and then you rally people to come help you with the thing. And basically, again, like I mentioned, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, is you are completely honoring your creative cycle. I'm learning this myself. I'm like, am I in a creative cycle? Am I in a rest cycle? Am I just slogging through? So it's a lot of playing around. But when you are truly in groove, you know exactly when to rest and exactly when to turn on and be okay with switching on and off, even if the timing feels incredibly inconvenient, like what Danny was mentioning before. Well, that uh, comes all in. I love this last thing, being yourself unapologetically, you know, you're here to start things, get in that groove, yep, and do that thing that does inspire you. Mm -hmm. Just like the rest thing, being at rest is, again, back to the rest cycle, which is so important. Mm -hmm. And then you're here to start things, but not necessarily finish them. That doesn't mean that manifestors can't finish anything. That's not what it means at all. What it does mean is your role is more to be that initial fire starter. And then you rally support from your generators, your many gens to help you bring that to the finish line. And that's okay. That's absolutely okay. So your role, which it rolls into is to initiate things. So bring things into the 3D and have impact. So impact can be small things like what Danny said, it's two big things like, convincing someone to move to a different country <laughs> right. so it could be small it could be little but either way a manifester is here to make other people go like oh okay um but they won't necessarily recognize that which is funny um so you might be impacting people all around you but they might not be aware of that so that's something to consider so some special traits that a manifester had is uh, we keep talking about working together, but they don't necessarily work well together <laughs> because they want to tell people what to do. As long they're, as they're on the same path, if they're, they're truly on the same path, they'll they'll work well independently of each other, even if it's right alongside each other. Oh no, I'm not talking about just manifestors. I mean even oh. with other types. Like oh, okay. they're 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 not the best team players. They're either a leader, like they're the ones leading the charge, and everyone falls in line or they end up being a lone wolf doing things on their own. And again, it's not saying it's right. impossible. Right. It's just, it's it's more natural for them to do either one or the other. Uh, and like and I have, mentioned- and to, Listen, it's totally appropriate for a man, any manifester inside of any group working to have intermittent contact with the group, not necessarily steady. Hmm. Um, unless, unless the, it does, it's, the job may, de, may demand it. If you're on an oil rig, you know what I mean? You're steady with the other generators, but you probably shouldn't be on an oil rig unless you're some kind of <laughs> foreman. You know what I'm saying? For too long, because unless you're young, because manifestors, when they're young, they can choose to burn themselves out in certain ways. Um, but, you know, we've all seen it. I'm just saying they will survive it. You'll survive it up to 30 and 40 years old. After that, you are killing yourself ultimately. And you're, you know, I've seen manifestors survive it. I don't suggest it. It's just that. So it's Certainly. interesting that you mentioned that because so as having a non-defined sacral, the nuance that comes with that, and this is what Ra, the founder of human design said, manifestors don't know when enough is enough when it comes to work. So they can just keep going and going and going and going until that one day their body just gives up. Yep. They have either a horrible case of burnout or illness. Sometimes and the more, illness and the more motors they brain. have, the harder that tends to land. The more mm. motors they have, the harder that tends to land. You're a manifesto with one motor, as I recall, the emotional solar plex. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's plenty of motor. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, uh, our guest has a solar plex and an ego. So that ego could very easily make our guest that will be coming on later, you know, work too hard. Oops. You know, um, so ah, that's okay. See, that, I just learned something. I didn't know the the more motors you have, the harder the burnout. Interesting. Well, generally, ah. it's, it's a rule of thumb. It's not a guarantee. Yeah. No, everyone's got more awareness, uh, obviously. 
but that that's very cool. I had no idea. Um, so like I mentioned, absolutely, that's why they are more suited to being at the helm of things because they really don't like being told what to do or how to do it. So like you said, while stallion, you need to give them roaming, you know, free treat them like okay you know what you can do it the way you want so like in a workplace setting for example they do really well it's like contractors or as consultants because they can come in do their thing and then float away instead of like Especially just grinding if they're it out impacting people if they're impacting people with what they do then it feels great they're at peace the more the great think of what this is the greater the impact the more at peace they are these things go hand in hand that's the thing the lesser the impact the less they like the thing and they're perfectly fine with um with uh leadership above them as long as it's an institutional style leadership that no one has a choice about the government says pay your taxes okay you know whatever i, you know, I don't like it but that's that thing it's more institutional it's 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 embedded mm -hmm. the laws of nature say this is going to happen this way they don't mind having that as the laws of nature as a boss they just don't want to have a guy right next to them micromanaging them do, unless yeah. what's really happening is they're telling them what to do and then the boss is agreeing you know what I mean? Yeah. That that they can live with ish. It it, it you no, know, it, it drives them bonkers. So yep. we mentioned this one already. So they can initiate freely, right? So they can initiate a really big project, but it can be really difficult to stick to it if they're doing it by themselves all the way to the end. So what might happen, I'll like paint two scenarios. Scenario one, a manifestor is trying to initiate a project solo without any help. They might initiate parts of it, go into a rest cycle, can come out of the rest cycle, initiate the rest of it, go into a rest cycle. And it might need a few cycles to bring it to completion if that's what they choose to do. Or they might get bored and go on a different track. Or uh, another scenario is if they choose to work with others to help bring it to completion. All day long, all of those things. Um, there is a caveat to all of that. I mean, plenty of them. The thing is, their impact is felt best as they bring things to completion. Mm -hmm. So because they're designed to do, if that's something that they're doing, they're going to do it. And all the defined egos out there tend to want to bring things to completion. All the gate 53s and the gate 42s, well, the gate 42s tend to want to bring things to completion, even if it's in an open sacral, which mm -hmm. it would be. Um, plenty of things. But you're right. They're designed to fall off the moment they want their rest and someone else is doing the job. They're designed to specialize their job so that they're not doing everything. Don't yeah. make a manifester the chief cook and bottle washer of the of the cafe. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> make them the cook. You know, manifestors as cook sounds great. You know what I mean? Um, manifestors bottle washer absolutely will be the best bottle washer ever as long as they can come in and float on out when they're done. You know what I mean? Without a lot of rules around them, they will mm -hmm. figure out what's best. Um, let them figure out what's best. And if they truly aren't doing what's best, it'll show up. They'll mm -hmm. start being angry, dissatisfied with things. They won't be at peace. They can't tell what the impact is. They don't mm -hmm. like it. They get agitated and yep. they start, you know, anger starts at agitation or agitation might be only anger at first or might only be agitation at first before it's anger. There's a whole mixture. This whole word anger is like a, a chemistry that pours off the gall and pours into the body. And it's like an acid. Again, no different than, dude, when you fall in love with somebody, right? Don't you get that yeah. feeling? They're, does your heart go pitter patter type thing? You just get a thing, sweaty palms when it's new. Yeah, something. it's like, you know, the butterflies in the tummy. What, yeah, what sure. is that? What is that's not a construct of the mind. That's a chemistry in your body mm, that your right. mind is interpreting. In fact, it's hard for our minds to even interpret that because we're all like, what is this? What do I feel? Da, da, da. Well, you know, all sensations are that. I only pick falling mm. in love because it's something people can identify with and whatever. Mm. It seems like anger isn't that, but you know what? If I'm my manifesto friend never gets angry, I don't know how much they love me or not. Because I, I only know what boundaries I'm pumping up against and they get to see their own. Remember, they don't necessarily know where they're about to get angry. They have to experience that. Mm. I mean, they may have an idea and be like, hey, you know, this is going to make me a better. They have an idea in advance of certain things, but that's only some things. That's not all things at all. <clears throat> you're going to find out what makes yeah. you angry because you're going to bump into it. Right. And, it and has to happen in the moment. 
Yeah, very similar yeah. to what we were talking about with generators last week. So it is yeah. a thing. It's like you you won't know until it, it actually happens. Until you're reacting. Because mm. no, but we're all in the reaction game. Life makes us react to what the hell. You know, what, mm. what, the, what the hell? You know, we're always reacting to that. So that's needed. But at the same time, they're going to spot this anger and they're going to say, this is a chemistry. I'm agitated. It's pouring out. It's uncontrollable. Uh, some manifestors will describe, I have visions of chopping their head off. You know, oh, they know yeah. Not, oh, no. uh, for me, it's usually punching them in the face or throwing the face a or chair or through the wall. Inflicting <laughs> some kind of damage and using your power to yes. stop them. Oh, stop so them. satisfying. This is it's why there needs it. to be more rec rooms. I was so sad when they were like, why are you shutting these things down? They're great. Let me go smash some things. <laughs> Right. Let them smash things, let them break things. But understand at the same time, you know, we all know we're in a world with rules and laws. I don't know any manifestors that go around chopping heads off. They don't. And it happens inside. And so what does it do? It eats them up. Ooh. If they don't start, if they're not in their experiment, witnessing anger is a road sign. It's great. It tells me when I'm off course. Mm -hmm. You know, those bumps on the side of the road. Brrr, and they get louder oh, the more I, you're I on. hate those. Uh, right. I can't remember what they're called, but yeah, yeah that's to, to make sure yeah. you don't fall asleep at the and wheel or crash into the, the concrete wall. Right. No one really likes them. When you hit them, it's always jarring. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and stuff. And you wouldn't want to drive on them unless you're being a total douche and driving the rest of the people <laughs> car crazy. You know. Or maybe you like the sound for a few minutes and you drive on them, but mostly you don't. Right. Right. I've driven on them for a while because I like the sound for a little bit, but uh, mostly I don't. That's what it's like. You come into it and it suddenly puts you back on track. It's exactly like those grooves on the side of the road, the speed grooves to let you know mm. that you're veering off. And so you so, look at them that way. And so what, that's what that anger does. So I also kind of touched on this. So back in the day, long, long time ago, I don't ask me when, maybe Danny knows, uh, manifestors were actually the oligarchs, the royalty the monarchy the dictators they were the, the ones controllers the controllers they were the, the ones owners. who set things up the yep. lawmakers the decision makers but uh that tyrants. Role, tyrants uh that role has now been shifted away in our current society so manifestors are not really there to do that anymore so we're although they can they, they can. There's, 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 there's some. Hear that. During this interim period, Rob would always point out that they're being, they're, they're, that's shifted. It's moved on. And he's right. It's moved on to the projector. But the projector doesn't always know. So mm -hmm. they're actually share, currently in practical terms, they're sharing that with the manifestor. Manifestors mm -hmm. and projectors are sharing that because we still, we still follow the manifestor in the wake of their impact. If they make an impact, everyone's like, oh, look at that. Let's go do that. Mm. You know, that's not the projector's fault. That's not the manifestor's fault. That's not the general. It's not no one's fault. It's mm. just a thing. So it's mm -hmm. it's a shared thing, and and we wouldn't want to tell our manifestors to you know get out of the business of of, of running a country. You know what I mean? Just make sure you got a lot of projectors around because they need to lend guidance, whether you like mm. it or not. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or in fact, if you don't like it, then you need them. Ah, because if you're not Ooh. self that doesn't like it. And it's the wisdom inside you that knows that we need them. It's not because they have the greatest ideas. It's because their aura penetrates us and makes us direct our own selves mm -hmm. as well as their direction. It's a that, that's going to be fun to talk about next week also in depth because we have a projector episode coming up. But uh, this, I definitely want to drive this home. With our last point. Home and get our guest on. Yep. Yeah. Manifestors do not have a set pattern of work so for them to slog in day in day out day in day out is a recipe for burnout it's not the best way to go about doing things and 